A local scientist has become a star for his views about alien spacecraft. Harvard scientist Avi Loeb believes the discovery of interstellar objects might be proof that we're not alone. In tonight's Question Everything, I sit down with Loeb and ask, why does he believe this and why does he have so many critics? You won't find any tin foil hats here. Only a dapper scientist in a lovely home outside of Boston. This is Avi Loeb, believer of alien spacecraft, who says he's just a curious farm boy, raised in Israel, where he cared little about flying saucers. I hate science fiction. You grew up hating science fiction? Yes, because, uh, you know, many times the storyline uh, violates the laws of physics, and I cannot enjoy it because it sounds completely unreal to me. Loeb was so gifted in physics that he was put in a special program while serving in the Israeli military. And in the four decades since, his accomplishments have been out of this world. A PhD in physics at age 24, a longtime Harvard professor, the longest serving chair of its Department of Astronomy, who's authored nine books, become a New York Times bestseller, He's written more than a thousand scientific papers. He's a former member of the President's Council of Science and Technology. There is not, no bigger question in science than, are we alone? Are we alone? Probably not. Loeb is not alone on that. 65% of Americans think life exists on other planets. What makes him an outlier began in 2017 with an object called a Muamua the first confirmed object from another solar system to come to ours. And it was unlike anything NASA had seen. It was oddly shaped, 10 times longer than it was wide. No water, no ice, no comet-like tail. And it actually sped up as it moved away from the sun. Loeb declared that it could be a spacecraft. Would I be happier if it's a rock? Uh, simply because it doesn't pose a threat? Or would I be happier if it's a alien technology, I have a hard time deciding, but as a scientist, I want to figure it out. This summer, he was back in the headlines after the discovery of another interstellar object, 3i Atlas. It's unusually bright, has an odd trajectory, and it's massive. Again, he wondered aloud if it's a piece of extraterrestrial technology. The brightness that we see coming from it uh, if it's just the reflection of sunlight from a solid surface, implies that it has a size bigger than Manhattan Island. That's a million times more massive uh, if it's a rock than the previous objects we saw. Other scientists have said it's just a comet without a tail. Right. They call it a dark comet. Right. And you say what to that? That it's an oxymoron because it's just like looking at an elephant and saying that's a zebra without stripes. Okay, so when you say a comet without a cometary tail, the tail is the signature of a comet. Avi Loeb's headline-grabbing research has really excited some deep-pocketed donors who have been sending money to fund his projects here at the astronomy department at Harvard. But while he has his benefactors, he also has his detractors who aren't buying what he's selling. What do you say to the critics out there who think you are just sensational, that you seek the spotlight, that all of this is about getting more money from generous donors and to write more books. I don't really care what people think. Science is not about us lecturing the public what is right and or wrong. It's about, it's about a process by which we all learn together. Loeb now heads the Galileo Project, building observatories across the country to watch for interstellar activity because he thinks discovering alien technology could be the biggest leap for mankind. They might be far more accomplished than we are. They might have bigger brains. They might have artificial intelligence well beyond what we have. They might know more about science. Let's just observe and listen. And that's what I thought was interesting. He thinks if there is something out there, that it's a good thing, that we'll learn from them. And he wants other scientists to commit to more research on the possibility rather than just writing it off. And I said, what if you're dead wrong? He said, that's okay. Wait, but without that curiosity, we'll never know. We'll never know. He's very interesting. I'll yes. say that. Good story. Thank you.